This is Marin, and you're listening to Homeschool Unrefined, the podcast where we keep homeschool simple, real, and fun. And this is Angela. You've got episode 136, How We Homeschool Through a Pandemic, part 7. We are going to get to that in a few minutes. First, we just wanted to say hello. Mm-hmm. Uh, welcome. Thank you for coming back. We're glad you're here. Um, special shout out to our Patreon supporters and our new Patreon supporter, Tiffany. Thank you for supporting us, mm. Tiffany. Yes, thank you so much, Tiffany. And this episode is actually brought to you by our $5 squad on Patreon. Patrons make our work possible and patrons get more. Uh, there's always two extra episodes every month and then usually more than that. Um, yep, ex- extended interviews, um, lots of other special things. We, You're always the first to know about news and announcements. If you'd like to join Patreon, go to patreon.com slash homeschoolunrefined and you'll find all the information right there. Yes, and we just have a couple announcements. We are doing Instagram Live now. Mm-hmm. I mean... Well, I just said that we're, like it was a final thing. We're trying we're it. We're doing it now. <laughs> we did it last week and we're doing it this week. <laughs> We've done it twice. <laughs> did we do it twice already? We okay, did we it did twice. it twice. Yep. And we're going to do it for a third time on Wednesday at 1 o'clock Central Time. Yeah. And we're just going to talk a little bit about the episode and maybe give a few updates. Yeah. There, there are always a few things we like to go deeper on. I mean, we'd like to do it on the show, but we just don't have the time for it. So right. it's kind of nice to be able to do that. Just dive a little bit deeper. And I feel like it's a little mini episode in the middle of the week. Kind of. Yeah. And I'm becoming more comfortable with it. Good. So that's good. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> and then on Friday, this Friday, May 8th at 2 o'clock Central Time, we are going to go live in Patreon for another Coffee Hour Live, which we love doing to um, see all of our patrons there. And we are calling this our Curriculum Wrap Up. And this is going to be where we talk all about the specific curriculum that we use. And um, we would love to have you join us there. And after that, we're going to make like a little one page download for Mm -hmm. all of the patrons. So if you can't come on Friday, but you would like to get that, it will drop into your podcast feed if you're a patron and you will get that um, one page guide if you're a patron. I'm so excited for that. I'm I I'm too. looking forward to those coffee hour lives more and more every time. <laughs> yeah. It's I know. So I love them too. Mm-hmm. I actually I wish we could see everybody, see everybody's face live. So that's a little bummer, but I love seeing everybody's names and knowing that you're there and yeah. just chatting in and the I, chat with I everyone. think we're gonna figure something out for that too. Cause I would like Are we? I yes, we are. Oh wow. <laughs> we we okay. talked about that, didn't we? I know, I know. <laughs> we'll figure something out. Because I would love I would love it to be more, you know interactive yeah all right so we are gonna dive right in to the topic I think today right Angela yes a lot of times in the past we we normally do like a little uh chat at the beginning but um I think we're just gonna dive in because you know it's kind of a chat anyway it's a chat it's, <laughs> it's an hour of chat all right so we're, let's start with state of the family yes and I mean, I like to, I like to also just say, what's, you know, the state of yourself, who, how you're doing, yeah. how are you doing? How's everybody doing right now? We're doing well. You know, we're in this marathon mm-hmm. as we've called it yes, now. Yep. We're in this for the long haul. Um, and I'm actually, speaking of that, thinking about how we are going to sustain what we're doing. Yeah. Because it doesn't seem like this is going to be over. Right. Right. Um, like we I mean, kind I of think maybe thought for a while. Yeah, I remember at the beginning of this, I thought, okay, we'll just do a quick two week shutdown. Yep. (laughs) And then we'll be back. Move on. And that was naive um, (laughs) because that is not happening. And so I'm really thinking ahead to the summer and Mm -hmm. next Mm -hmm. fall. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you are too. I I feel like, are you? Okay. I feel like the problem is there are no answers. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Nobody knows what's going to happen. It's so so hard to plan when there are no answers. So I'm not really planning. Mm. I'm just really thinking ahead because story of my know, life, Angela. Summer. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I'm thinking a lot and I okay. don't do the planning okay. part, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, so you're probably really good at this. <laughs> when I can't plan ahead, it's hard. Um, yeah. Okay. So I feel like 
thinking about the summer, usually in the summer, my kids are involved in some activities. Right. And I'm trying to balance the number of activities with the number of downtime. Well, if you've g- yes. And I think you and I both have thought about summer in the past as like, this is when there's actually activities planned for yes. kids our age. So let's just jump on it. Totally. And then be, we can be less busy during the school year with all the activities because we do them all in the summer when they're available. Right. And now the that summer, so true. it's kind of like, mm, there yeah, aren't any. I kind of feel like, because we homeschool Mm -hmm. in the summer that is our time Mm -hmm. that is our like wow there's stuff for every age kid and (laughs) every act every interest yes and any time of day and you could sign up for anything any physical (laughs) activity art project you know uh any creative outlet like they're just everything there's everything right and so this year it's looking like that's not gonna happen probably i mean i don't know for sure but that's what it feels like on a smaller scale if you know if anything It'll be smaller. There will be less of it. So I'm, and then what I usually do in the summer is take a, like an academic break, like a pretty big break. Um, And I think that's probably location dependent because in Minnesota, this is the time when it's really nice (laughs) and everybody wants to be outside. And so in Minnesota, we, I take a big break for that reason. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, we have to um, take advantage of the weather. And so now, this is kind of turning everything on its head for me yeah. because um, I'm not sure we can just be home all summer with like a big, have taking a big academic break. Yeah. Um, yep. With no activities. I, I'm not I sure agree. we can do that. Yeah. I see that. I can totally see that. Yeah. And I, yeah. I'm kind of feeling the same way. I'm thinking you? we're doing, you know, <sighs> I've, I've said this so many times in, in episodes, you've probably heard me like a broken record talk about how, you know, we don't do super intense um, academic times mo- mostly. So it's it seems more even keeled all year anyway. Yeah. Um, so it's not like even, you know, e- but even dropping the amount that we have would feel a little mm-hmm. weird right now this summer yeah because yeah. we need something to do <laughs> and, yeah, and those I feel- those those academic things were replaced with other activities in the summer and that if that's not going to happen we might as well just keep going that's kind of how I'm feeling right but my kids are like oh yeah really ready for a I break I agree and that's the and that is very important to keep in mind yeah it's very right. important right so I'm feeling like okay we take a break from mm-hmm. the academics but you can't go anywhere yeah So, you know, and like I kind of alluded to last week, a couple of my kids are really self-directed yep, and one is not. (laughs) Right, right, right. So I'm really pondering what this is going to look like because it can't just be like, I don't know, one of my kids really needs lots of structure. And so, I don't know, I just throwing this out there, one thing I was thinking of is taking a one month break. Sure. Complete academic break. And then going back to school. I don't know when that one month would be. Yeah. I suggested July and then one of my kids said, no, I'd want June. And then one of my kids said, I'd want August. So I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's so, never simple. It's never simple. <laughs> so I don't know when that would be. And I don't know if that's a good answer. But um, that's one idea. Mm-hmm. Or just maybe doing a little bit of academics every day mm-hmm. still in the summer. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of you do that already. So yeah. it's probably just going to be a mental shift for me. For sure. You know, I'm also thinking about next fall and yeah. I know it's too soon. I mean, I just, I know it's too soon. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Um, yeah. Although, but, you know, registration has to be in for things now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not registering for anything. Okay. Yeah. Are you, I mean, I, I feel like they've got to be flexible, the places that are wanting registration. Yeah. I don't know. I just... Um, I don't want to sign up for co-ops and activities mm-hmm. that are going to be on Zoom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or or if I know they're going to be on Zoom, I want to know that ahead of time before sure. I sign up. Yeah, you, know? you want to know what the plan so, is. Yeah, I want to know. And so I feel like, wow, if we're going to have, like, oh, I need activities. I need outside activities. <laughs> and, for um, your like kids. Co- co-ops and yeah. different things. Mm-hmm. I We need that. And so I know that, I, it, you know, if it's not possible, it's not possible. But. Um, I'm just trying to th- brainstorm other ways and other things we can mm-hmm. do. Um, yeah. 
that meet some of those needs. Yeah, I have to say, um, we did an out school class on yeah. Zoom this week with two of my kids. Yeah, um, they were excited about it until it started, and then one of them had a <laughs> panic attack. I'm not kidding oh, you. No. Oh, like no. really, like could hardly breathe because just it's just ah. All of a sudden, you see your face on the screen and with all these other people you don't know, and you're like, what? Yeah. You know, it just feels very vulnerable. And yeah, it does. And then one kid refused. No, I'm not doing that. And then (laughs) only got that kid back if I turned off the screen altogether and and microphone. (laughs) So, you know, like, I just think it's just such a different, I mean, it's a completely different way to think about how... You're going to learn, and it, and it might actually work for those two at some point. I don't know, but, like, <laughs> it was, yeah. I, I think it would be tough. I don't know. I think it would be tough. It's tough. To fi- to, to figure out with, with those two. The other two have been doing Zoom classes the whole time, and it's been great and okay. easy and fun. Okay. And, like, they actually are super comfortable with it and love it, to be honest. Okay. Okay. And so yeah. I think it's just different for everybody how you know how that right. this fall is gonna turn out <laughs> right right and I'm thinking about my oldest too because she's in she was in public school this year and you know she's been doing distance learning yeah and who knows what's gonna happen there I know um and if it's gonna be distance learning is that the right school mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. I think it is probably I don't know um but it just makes it, it's causing me to reevaluate all of our choices. I know. And to kind of like not choose anything. Like I'm just kind of feeling the need to like kind of pull back and not decide. I'm a little Thanks. relieved that I'm not I'm I'm a little relieved that um choices are uh, things are unknown right now for for everyone for school next year because I'm so unsure. I've always been unsure about what we're going to mm. do until last mm. minute anyway. Like that's when I know. Mm-hmm. I know when mm-hmm. I get there. <laughs> yeah. Um and so now I feel like I'm not I'm not the only one right now <laughs> for the first time yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah, cuz you had like one kid at try school this year or well, two tried, but one yep, yep. Y- you're you might have been thinking like are we gonna do that again yep, next fall yeah, I don't know I like, know and we're and moving it, and I, I think check it out takes, schools yeah and it takes um I think uh, I've been talking with my husband about this how this whole year of traveling with our family like when you're in it it's it's I think it's very important to reflect but it's not until we're gonna be till we're out of it that we're going to be able to have that perspective that we kind of mm-hmm. maybe need to make the next decision <laughs> oh, about yeah. some things too so especially I think with how, what we're going to do for yeah school homeschool co-ops and whatever like I think we just need time to like be done with this before we know what the yeah. next thing is so yeah ugh. you're gonna get that so that's good yeah right exactly that's, that's good. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so how are things going for you guys um things are going well for us too I like I said in Instagram or live this yesterday or last week for people who are listening um I am kind of feeling like we might need a little more of something and I don't know what that is yet and you and I were both reflecting on how that happens a lot I'm either Mm -hmm. doing a little too much or a little too little and Mm -hmm. I'm always tweaking to get back you know in line with what feels the best and I feel like we're just a little bit on the doing less right now Mm. okay um and I feel like uh, in I don't know I'm feeling like I have a little bit of pent-up energy (laughs) okay and you know like we could do something but the thing is I don't want it to be more of intense academics that's this Mm -hmm. is not the time or place for that I don't think um and I want it to be very engaging and you know but I think that's Mm -hmm. I I sometimes have these uh I'm perfectionistic with my ideas of like how things I don't know how our learning should go or you know I want it to be ideal I idealize you know learning Mm -hmm. situations Mm -hmm. and so I know it's Mm -hmm. not going to be perfect and so sometimes right there that makes me just not do anything not want to do it yes Mm -hmm. and so I'm trying to just process through that feeling and be okay with it being not perfect and just trying something 
Yeah. So do you have ideas for that? I, you know, I'm thinking of some creative projects. Like, you know, we we did start this week doing some some art and writing just about our year of traveling. Like thinking mm-hmm. back to a place we went and doing some sketching or painting about that thing and then reflecting on it. And so I, I've always wanted to do, some, uh, you know, like a binder of our year mm-hmm. for each kid. Yeah. They have their own binder and we've been dragging them across the whole United States and we've done a little bit of that, but like this might be the time where we just yeah. dive into that. But it's just that like our kids have to be into that. They have to buy into that project for it to be be good mm-hmm. to yeah. you know forget for it to be a good project so that's where I like I'm you know get I get hung up a little bit mm. so right anyway yeah I'm also I was thinking like are you gonna do anything with photos or is that gonna be part of your book yeah part for sure I think yeah mm-hmm. that could be part yeah. of our binder although I I have kids, you know, some kids who are really great at editing photos. And so that could be mm. just a whole project mm. yeah. For, yeah, for them too. And making those book, yeah. books. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I know. So maybe that's where we just go from here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll right. see. That sounds perfect. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm also just asking myself and I talked to you a little bit about this. Like there are things that have been on my list of things to do. A lot of them are very academic-y things that like we really got to get to and they're just not, I'm never getting to them. I never have gotten to them. And even now while we're in quarantine and there, we have nowhere else to go and nothing, <laughs> nothing else to do. It's, they're still not getting done. Wow. I feel like this is a time for me to reflect and, and just, mm-hmm. just wonder like, why is that? Mm-hmm. And what should I do about it? And, um, and like we've, we've talked about so many times this is, you know, we're living through a pandemic. So like we shouldn't feel pressure to do all these really hard, hard things because hard things are hard, right? Easy things are hard right now. Yeah. Right. Hard things are harder. Right. So, but even still, I think this is a good time for me to kind of reflect on the things that just aren't getting ever, ever getting done on our list. And thinking like, what could I do with those things? Now there are choices like Number one, I could just let that thing go. And a lot of times that's what it is. It just needs to be let go. I need to release it. Like it doesn't need to get done if it's, if it's been on my list forever and I just can't get to it ever. Maybe it just shouldn't get done. Mm -hmm. Or maybe just during this period, this is the period where I, I let it go for now Mm -hmm. and I can revisit it later when I feel ready. Maybe it's just not the right time. Maybe it never was the right time. Mm-hmm. And it will be in a year from now. Mm-hmm. Who knows? But like um, those those are choices, right, that I need to think about right now. Or sometimes a minor tweak is the thing. Sometimes mm. one little thing changes everything. You know, like maybe it's the pens we use or the clipboards that need to get purchased. Or, you know, yeah. maybe yeah. there is just one little thing that just we change the time of day when it happens. And I think sometimes uh, we often think like, I can't get this thing done because it's just too hard or it's just, Mm. I mean, there's like a big reason. Sometimes it's really not. Sometimes it's just a little Mm. thing. So I'm kind of re, I'm evaluating that when I'm thinking about these things that I'm just not getting to. Um, And then also if it's like a subject, like, uh, I don't know, a language arts curriculum yeah. curriculum or something maybe it's like maybe it is a the whole thing just needs to get revamped like we, we need to do language arts but maybe it's not this whole big curriculum or something you know right right um <clears throat> so i don't know these are things i'm i'm reflecting on right now are these do you think that because of the pandemic and the stay-at-home thing is are these things coming up for you more yeah. now yeah for sure and i think I, one thing that I've learned, and maybe I talked about this last, I can't even remember if I, if I said this last week or not, but I have been feeling this way for a long time that I just, I feel like during this pandemic, I've really realized that I, how well I know my kids and what they need and who they are as people. Like it's becoming crystal clear to me Mm -hmm. and how important it is for me to hone in on that. And so, yeah, probably that's like a big, a big thing that I'm, I'm considering right now. Right. And maybe some of these things that you've always wanted to do are 
like naturally falling away yes. because you know you know your kids better now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So maybe a lot of it is letting go. I think a, I think a big part of it is for sure. Yeah. And yeah. and I think it's that's I think it's always a bigger percentage than we want to want it to be ever. Mm-hmm. The, oh yeah. The percentage of things that actually just needs to be let go of. Right. Is more than we ever think it mm-hmm. should be. Mhm. All right, a couple more things that I've been thinking about, just kind of reflecting on, is that um, <laughs> I've been, inv- you know, as you might remember, I invested in a lot of things at the beginning of this um, stay-at-home time: games, right? Mm-hmm. Um, art, pr- art supplies, mm-hmm. um, outdoor. I don't know. Uh, outdoor things to do like you know outdoor toys outdoor toys right and Mm -hmm. so and some have some have been a big hit and some have been duds and so I am I really can beat myself up about the things that didn't really make a big impact because like you know I spent money on those and time Mm -hmm, and work mm -hmm. and I am I'm realizing or you know not realizing I've known this for a long time but I'm working on not just kind of letting that go like it's okay this this is like a natural amount like you spend out of the 100% of money and time that you spend on these things like there's going to be a natural like 25% that's just <laughs> or more it's a bust it's or more or more yeah. yeah yeah and I just have to like think of that ahead of time be like yeah this is not all gonna hit and it's okay yeah it's okay because doesn't this happen in your regular life too I mean I think about all the games that I have in my cupboard that I cannot get rid of because I'm just like one of these days we're gonna play checkers yeah I mean checkers is classic <laughs> classic like I why are we not playing it I'm so disappointed we need to get that out and play that more or whatever and or or any other game and so I keep it yeah because I have this idea or whatever that I think it's important. Yes. But really, we should be letting go of that stuff. Absolutely. You're right. You're right. We can let go of it and it's okay. But I also think sometimes it's a hit now and it will and it won't be, you it know. It might be later. It, yeah. It, yeah. It might not be later and something else will be. Who knows? I know. Who knows? But <clears throat> I have to be okay with just not everything being a hit. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. Um, And then another thing that I've... I've really worked on is to make sure that we are having a pleasant time together, especially after there have been, you know, (laughs) some tough situations with siblings. Mm. Specifically, there are like specific things happening that like, you know, recurring issues. Right. Um, And I'm really trying to create at least some positiveness between the tough times. Mm. Um, for example, we're watching, I know I've talked about this before, but we're watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah. And um, it's when, <laughs> I would not suggest that for so many families, <laughs> but it, it's just working right now for us. So I'm like going with it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I have to say, like when we're watching that, sometimes I'm like, I cannot believe we're watching another episode. <laughs> but it is sometimes the thing that brings mm-hmm. us together. And we're yep. all laughing together. All of us. Yep. Yep. And I have to give it credit for that. Yes. I'm so thankful for you. it. And we need that right now. We do. We need it right now. Yes. That's so good. We are doing that with Parks and Rec. Oh, good. And I think I told you guys, I don't know, a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. that I had my bedtime books and TV and I wanted to name it with another B. Yeah. So that we could have some alliteration. And then my 15-year-old came up with bedtime books and binge. And I was like, why didn't I think of that? That's so smart. Brilliant. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm calling it. But really, it's like mm-hmm. we just sit on my bed before bed. Yeah. And I read aloud, yeah. which is my thing that I want to do. And then we all watch Parks and Rec. And everybody loves it so much. It's awesome. And I'm the, I'm the same as you, I think. Uh, sometimes it's a little inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, we could be watching something a little bit more quality, but <laughs> education. We all laugh together. I don't. <laughs> no, we all laugh together, and so it is. It's so good. It is. It's a shared experience. These are the things our kids will remember. About they will. This time. They'll be like, remember when we all watched Brooklyn Nine Nine together? Yeah. Yep. 
yep. in Austin. Yeah. And we're we're trying to predict like how how many episodes we're going to get to before mm. the quarantine's over. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We're predicting. So anyway. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And these are those are the kind of warm, fuzzy feelings I'd like them to take away from this time. So yeah. 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 Good for you. Yeah. All right. Should we move on to the nitty gritty? Let's. All right. Do, why, don't um, you, why don't you start first? Like, what are you okay. actually doing these days? Well, oh. I wanted to give a little update yes. on screens. I would love an update. I, we, I made some major changes last week. Mm-hmm. If you listened, you probably heard me, you know, talk about my um, big realization that I needed to cut way back on screen time, especially for one of my children. And then that, but that, what that means is that I have to kind of be on yes, and like really, um, you know, just proactive for most of our day mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I'm, a, uh, we're now having screen time just in the later afternoon. Yes. Um, and I was talking on the live yesterday about how there's this concept about like, I think it's, I don't know what it's called and I don't know who who coined it or thought of it but it's like hard easy if you do the hard thing now Mm -hmm. it will be easy later Mm -hmm. and that's how I feel like this is for me if the hard thing for me is like um putting in the routine and structure and dealing with um dealing with some pushback Mm. from some kids and um just figuring all that out first and then like being so present during the day that part's the hard part, it is the hard. challenging yeah. part. Yeah. And then but later it's easier for me because people are happier. Relationships are better. Yes. There's less um bad attitudes and stuff like that. And that's what I want. So great. And so I feel like for me sometimes the easy thing to do in the moment, the short term easy thing to do is to just like, why don't you just go do screens all day? <laughs> or for a yes. couple hours. Yes. Mom needs a break. Yep. And I I wholeheartedly um co-sign that if that works for you I think that's great I wish that worked for me but anyway so we've been doing this a couple weeks now and it's been really really good Good. it's been great I am I'm so um thankful that we're doing it it's not um hard and fast Mm -hmm. you know if something comes up or um whatever I'm okay changing things up I'm okay like you know I think um a couple days ago, we did a movie in the middle of the day. That's fine because it was raining, you know. Yeah. Um. B- so it's not hard and fast, but it so far is working out really well. Awesome. But going along with like what I said earlier about thinking about the summer, uh, I don't want to go to a summer of like binging screens. Right. So I want to keep this going if it's working. Um. But. Without the academics, I'm not sure how to f- how to fill that. So, right, right, right. Anyway, so what we're doing right now, just to kind of recap um, how our typical routine is going, is mm-hmm. we're having, like, work time during the day, mm-hmm. and we're getting outside, like, intermittently, you know? So, like, do a little bit of work, go outside a little bit. A little bit of work, go outside a little That's bit. That's awesome. <clears throat> My oldest is not really getting outside much because mm-hmm. she's doing her her distance learning, which takes a long time, but she's in charge of that. And then um, we do a, everybody do does deer time, which is drop everything and read. And we do that for like a half an hour. And then we get outside for a family walk. Then after that is screen time. So that's about three or four. Yeah. Um, and then we eat and then we do our B, 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 and B. Yeah. Bedtime time books and binge <laughs> later. So that's kind of our schedule right now. It is <clears throat> honestly like way too much for, like it's busier than I, oh. I, I want it to be, Mm. you know, like I feel like for me, it's I could use some more laid back time in the middle of the day, Um, just trying to manage everybody's routine. And it has become like harder for me to take care of myself. Like I was doing well, taking a separate walk by myself, but it is hard to fit that in, especially when Jeremy's traveling, traveling. It's it's been really hard. So um, I still need to like really work on that. I need to work on my commitment to myself. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. It's such a balance. I mean, it's kind of like how I was talking about earlier about how we're a little bit on the doing less yes. side right now. Yeah. And, you know, we're always calibrating to totally. get there. Yes. You're always trying to find, like, 
And the thing is, you think there's like a magic answer. Mm. If I could just like do it, or I do at least, I feel like there's a magic answer. And if I just scooch it a little bit this way, we'll we'll nail it. And I just haven't been able to do that yet. And that's not really true because like the target is always moving. Yes, exactly. So, exactly. You're never going to um, get it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of yeah really how things are going. But also my kids are... Really, I mean, we've been hitting the academics hard. This has been an academic season for us. Wow. This lockdown. Yeah. I would say it's been academic. More than any other time. So this is interesting. I have to ask because, you yeah. know, you have been such a proponent of not putting pressure to do all that. Not putting pressure yeah. on yourself or anyone else to do that kind of stuff right now because we're living through a yeah. pandemic. Yeah. So, but it's working for you. And yeah. So what was yeah. your how how did you decide to do more academics right now? I didn't really decide. I just feel like we needed things to do during the day mm-hmm. and it, and and those were the things out, that worked for you. Yeah, those were the things. Yeah. And it started out the weather wasn't great. So we we could only get outside like honestly for half an hour. <laughs> so yes. Or an hour or something. And then the rest of the time we were just inside and I felt like when everything else falls away and you don't have a like commitments or events Mm -hmm. or other things getting in the way it's like oh we can do math five times a day five times a week (laughs) and we can do like handwriting every day yes yeah we can do typing every day yeah look at that uh and it only takes 10 minutes and your kids and your kids don't do they complain about it or how does that how do they handle it yeah i mean they are starting to and so that's kind of what i was getting at is like um, it's kind of been an intense academic season mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I would say probably compared to the average host- homeschooler, this is not intense. <laughs> it's like intense for me. <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. Intense for us this is more than we've ever done. Um, we're not just to clarify, like doing academics all day. Like when you compress it down, it's maybe an hour mm-hmm. per kid. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but we're doing things consistently and daily, yes. which is, I think the, the difference. That's the intensity. That's the intensity. Yes. Yeah. It's like short, a little bit every day of different things. So I don't know. I think my kids are needing a change. Yeah. Yeah. But it's nice though, because I'm sure you would prefer that a little bit every day. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. And it is nice to finally kind of work through a math curriculum. Get stuff done, right? I know. (laughs) Like that never happens. progress. (laughs) (laughs) We're learning stuff. You're on a roll. We're on a roll. So I kind of don't want to yeah. change it up too much. Yeah. But yeah. I think we're just ready for a change, but it's looking like that's probably not going to happen too much. Or mm-hmm. like, you know, the change we want is like, school's out, it's summertime, let's have fun. <laughs> and, you know, and that's not going to happen. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Ugh. Anyway. All right, Marin. So what is your nitty gritty? Okay. So we're kind of, not a bunch has changed since last week, but I do want to kind of go through it because... Even little things I feel like are kind of changed. I mean, it's just a little different and it feels different this week. Um, We're still doing everybody. Well, at least the two that get up early need to ear read or I read in the morning, which I am loving because that's what I do in the morning. Yeah. (laughs) And so it feels good that we're all kind of just doing that. Right. And you're kind of you're requiring that. Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I just... I like that they're getting into that habit because it's my habit too, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it just feels good to all for all of us to kind of be on the same page as that with each other. Yeah, on that's that great kind of stuff. So, yeah, and then um, our we, we usually start our day like officially. I don't know, this is an official like homeschool day or whatever by just doing a read aloud. And so we've been reading uh, the Vanderbeekers, and oh, our kids yeah. requested the next one right away as soon as we finished. The, awesome. So we were on the second one. Now we're on the third one and it's the Vanderbeekers to the rescue. Yeah. Which is just like so perfect for us right now because, um, you know, we live right now we're in Austin, Texas. We're living near this Creek. We're saving the tadpoles because the Creek is drying up and all the tadpoles are like dying. Yeah. <laughs> and we've taken a lot home with us and so we have these terrariums which are basically big big plastic bins um in our backyard now and we're saving 
<laughs> especially in our kids' minds, we're saving the lives of these tadpoles. And, That's awesome. And then we've added some frogs, too. Oh. <laughs> um, so uh, our kids are, that has just been, it's kind of taken over our day, these tadpoles. Um, we're learning so much about them. But also, this book, The Read Aloud, is all about, this specific book is about how the Vanderbeekers are saving these animals. Oh. Anyway, so it, it's just, you know, like when things line up and you didn't yeah. plan it, and it's just yeah. like this perfect, these perfect moments. It's just, so it's been really sweet to read that book while our kids are even playing with their tadpoles, <laughs> the tadpoles at the same time. And it's just the kind of, it's just been a great like morning experience for us. So I'm loving that. That's great. And is that just your, yeah. t- I know here I come with my clarifying questions. Yes. No, I'm glad you are. Cause I'm, I'm not this always. Is my, um, this is my personality. I always have the clarifying questions. Yeah, that's good. Um, is this just your two kids? For the most part, yes. Yeah. Because okay. the other two are normally busy yeah. doing their online schooling. Although, I have to say, <laughs> and I could take a cue from this situation, um, especially one of my kids is very happy to come and join the Read Aloud yeah. every day, which she's the one who's never happy to join the read aloud when it's required so Mm. it's definitely a personality thing that I need to tap into for sure yeah well also I was thinking like I want to be in on that read aloud and take care of the tadpoles tadpoles. I know right (laughs) so I would feel like if I were doing online school I'd want to yeah kind of scooch in there yeah totally (laughs) I know agreed agreed yeah so um so that's been great and then we often will go on a hike right after that and go down to the creek and we have to walk a little bit further now to get to some water (laughs) because the creek is drying out but we do find some water and play in the water and things like that so we're trying to do that in the morning because it's getting so hot here in the afternoons Mm, yeah um so the but the mornings are just like beautiful just yeah, like I bet just so beautiful so we're enjoying that in the mornings and I have to say um the morning physical activity mm. of like it's I mean we are sometimes gone for two hours in the morning and I just think oh that's what our kids need every yes. morning two hours of hiking <laughs> or playing outside yes. um and I feel like the whole rest of the day goes a lot better when that is what we do in the mornings. So yeah, I'm definitely taking notes on that. And I know that's not always the case. It can't always happen in the middle of winter um, mm-hmm. in Minnesota. But I think I'm realizing just how important that <laughs> really is. It balances everything out. Like yeah. I said, I think I kind of said that last week too. But wow. I actually just literally took notes on that. Yeah. You said I'm taking notes on that yeah, as yeah. I was writing yeah. it down. <laughs> because I was remembering um, that... I got to make that happen. Well, and I think we <laughs> often think going to play outside is the thing we do after we get our work done. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's the thing that starts their brain working. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. that's what gets the juices flowing and helps mm-hmm. everybody to um, prepare to learn. So, right. oh my gosh. Yeah, it's like night and day. So we do that and then we'll come home and eat lunch and hang out with Sean who's coming out of the bedroom from work (laughs) works in our bedroom now um so we get to spend some time with him which is just awesome um and then what I've been really appreciating doing right after lunch is doing a quick math um lesson on dream back dream box which we've I've just loved it so much I've loved dream box um and then we are doing simplex spelling apps, which um, another thing that I'm doing with these apps is I'm sitting right down. And because I have only two kids who really need to do these things, um, I'm sitting in the middle of the couch and they're sitting mm-hmm. on either side of me and I am helping them with both mm-hmm. of these apps. Um, we're yes. talking through things. I have a whiteboard and I'm writing things down with them. They're writing things down too. So it's not just like this like passive mm-hmm learning like let's get totally. through this it's more of an active we're having dialogue it's very interesting I don't know I'm mm-hmm. really I'm really enjoying both of the apps <laughs> a lot yeah. and it's creating some like invigorating conversations so I'm loving it 
Yeah. You know, I have found that too with apps. A lot of times we want to be passive. Yes. And just be like, can you just go do this Why app? Why don't you just go do that app? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And really, it works so much better if you're sitting next to them. Yes. Ready to answer some questions and offer support if they need it. Right. But that that's not always, that's hard to well, get into that routine and habit. Yeah, and if I had one more kid who needed to do that, I don't yeah. know how it would happen. Right. Or it would have to right. be at different times, and then what do you do with the other yeah. kids? And so it gets complicated. And mm-hmm. so I'm very thankful for this season where I have two kids who are um, doing some online things. Mm-hmm. So I can really focus. And maybe maybe once I get good here with these two, I, do, I, get, I get good at this job <laughs> of, you know, um, monitoring and and I don't know helping helping them out supporting supporting maybe then I can like incorporate the other you know when it gets to be four of them all needing to do this work maybe I can add that later but like I think I think sometimes putting you know these big lofty ideas on our heads or these plans um on our shoulders it's just sometimes feels like so overwhelming Mm -hmm. a lot of times Mm -hmm. I just I'm like I can't I'm not doing that I can't do it Mm -hmm. so then I just Mm -hmm. don't but to start small is really has been very awesome (laughs) I've loved it so much um and then we do we do quiet time after that usually it screens or we'll watch something together but a lot of times I just need at that point I am like at my limit I am Mm -hmm. so done (laughs) <laughs> yeah like I just need alone time and so does everybody else so, so a lot of times that screens um sometimes it's an audiobook for everybody or quiet reading but um yep yep and then after that what I've um also realized is after that we need to do we need to be busy we need to I need to have a little bit of a plan for kids in the late afternoon okay. later afternoon but it can't be like something super structured or intense or like demanding of them um, mm-hmm. you know, intellectually or, you know, emotionally or whatever. Um, so what I've done, we've done some creative time. Um, <clears throat> we've done some art, like I was talking about, we've done some art and writing about our, our, um, our traveling from the year. Mm-hmm. That's when that's happening. It's like after quiet time and there's just like, mm-hmm. I put on some quiet, some chill music or something and, you know, where they can, kind of work on something but without me telling them exactly how it needs to be done or whatever this is just your work time and I'm going to show you what I want you to you know I want you to do something like this and then they just kind of go for it yeah nice yeah and then this is also the time where we've gotten out games this is a great time to play games for us (laughs) where you know we just need something to do but it can't be screens anymore Mm -hmm. it has to be something Mm -hmm. else so a lot of games um we pulled out a, <laughs> Angela. We pulled out a puzzle this week. <laughs> oh wow! Did you I like know. It? I was like, wow. I've really, I'm really scraping now. <laughs> I'm not a huge puzzle fan. Have you, but... have you always said you wanted to do puzzles? Is this one of the things? <laughs> yes, this is one so... of the things on my list that I'm like. <laughs> why am I never getting to puzzles? Because <laughs> I don't like them. But actually, this one is great. It's super doable. It's like, well, it's a 500 How many piece. Pieces? It's 500. Okay. Yeah, that's a good, but good size. I like it because it's just the picture. It's like, you know, it's a picture with lots of distinct colors. So it's, oh, yeah. it's easy. I have to yeah. say it's an easy one. That's okay. That's <laughs> so how you get started. I'm enjoying it. I'm actually enjoying it. Okay. Because so of that. I, I'm going to resist the urge to tell you which puzzles to buy next. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the puzzles that you suggested. I know. Which They're are the best. Um, Charlie Harper. Charlie Harper. I like those because they have distinct colors too. They do. And they're beautiful to look at. So you just, you uh, want to do it. You want to do it. Yes. It's a good picture. Okay. Well, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, you could convince me now because of this one. <laughs> okay. How about when you move back? I'll yes. drop some on your <laughs> new porch. Sounds good. Because <laughs> I have like 12 of them. So. Oh my gosh. And we've, we've, um, I mean, we're, we're doing them over and over and over again. Really? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, that's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, we're also spending time outside at this time and, um, checking on the tadpoles. Yeah. Always. (laughs) Like really always. Um, I'm also, we're still having the kids. They each have a day of the week where they're, they're in charge of dinner. 
Um, oh, yeah. It's very, I have to say, though, that seems like I put a lot of pressure on my kids to make dinner, but it's really not like that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, for example, last night, <clears throat> my son was in charge of dinner. He made mac and cheese for, ended up being three of the three of the people, three out of six people. And then I just, we just, the rest of us ate leftovers, which was fine. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's really just the experience of, you know, yeah. helping the family being part of you know the process of the processes that happen in our family so right yeah Mm -hmm. and then we're trying to get out for a walk in the evenings um which is just I'm really loving that too I I have to say it's when it's dark out or it's getting dark out um it's the perfect temperature here normally and Mm -hmm. um we're all we're all like nobody's fighting us I have to say so much of our trip, so much of our trip has been, it's been a lot of walking and hiking this year. Yeah. (laughs) Since last summer. Um, and there's been a lot of complaining about it. The least amount of complaining. I mean, there's, there isn't complaining anymore. Maybe they're used to it now. I think it's because they're (gasps) used to it. They like, they've grown into this, this lifestyle, I think a little bit. Um, also, I mean, I think a big part of it is just, it's beautiful here. I mean, the Creek and the, the hiking is beautiful. Um, you know, and also, I think yeah. because it's not home, it's a different place. Yeah. You know, it's a little yeah. bit of that, too. So there's a little novelty there, too. But I have to say, um, I'm, I'm like cautiously optimistic. Yeah, <laughs> you can't you can't quit doing that. I know. You can't quit going on long walks I and know. hikes. Well, yes, exactly. You're right. I can't. We have to keep doing it now. It. So anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing all that. Yes. Yes. All right, let's move on to loving this week. All right, LTWs. Uh, Angela, what are you loving this week? I am loving a recipe. Ooh. We've made it. <laughs> well, we've made it twice this week, and Jeremy was traveling, <laughs> and he made it once because he liked it. All in wow. one week. Wow. He made it when he was gone? I know. Oh, wow. Well, uh, he's not, he's not, typically not, doesn't cook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, you know. You can't go out to eat. <laughs> you can't right, go out to eat. So right. he has to cook. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he has to cook now when he's traveling. So, um, and he loved this recipe. It is chicken shawarma <laughs> from the Lazy Genius. Okay. Love her. And I like her too, but I was skeptical. And then she kind of like highlighted this recipe on her Instagram mm. and talked about how, what did she, oh, change your life. I think she calls it change your life shawarma. Wow. I don't even know what shawarma is, but I know, I knew it had some interesting spices. My kids probably wouldn't like, mm. and I thought, I'm not sure. But then we had chicken thighs and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to, we need to spice it, spice things up. <laughs> <laughs> and I so I, I decided that. to give it a try and the exclamations from my kids mm. Especially, especially my child who doesn't like anything that I ever make. Wow. We're, I mean, I wish I had a video and I could send it to <laughs> the lazy genius, Kendra, because <clears throat> I mean, they loved this so much. So what you do is you make a, um, it's like an oil, a spicy oil. Okay. It's like a half a cup of oil and then you put a bunch of spices in it. Okay. Then you put the chicken thighs in that okay. and you just marinate yep. it basically, right? And then you can you can cook it any way you want, but we grilled it Sounds because good. she pointed out, which I've never thought of before, that when you grill something, there's no pan to clean up. <laughs> I have never thought of that. That is so true. <laughs> yeah, oh, I cannot yeah. believe that. I was like, I okay, think about yeah, that a lot. You do. Yes, okay. <laughs> you're smart. Easy. I never thought about that. So and it tastes the best when it's grilled. Anyway, yeah. So then the nice thing about this is just chicken chicken thighs, which are in this marinade and they're grilled. But you can put it over like salad greens. You can put it over rice. You can put it in pitas. You can do whatever you want with us, yes. basically. So one time we did it over rice and just like I found whatever veggies I had and kind of like you just made your own bowl. And then one time I put it over, we just had salad, like wow. basically chicken salad. Yeah. But the spices are cumin, paprika, allspice. Never use that. Okay. Which Turmeric. is just a bunch of different spices, right? Is it? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't know what allspice is. Okay. Turmeric, mm. um, coriander, gar- garlic powder, cardamom. Never used that. Oh, yes. Cinnamon and cayenne. And it was, 
It was so good. That so. sounds amazing to me. Yeah, it's really, oh, really, really, really gosh. good. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah. so, so you're going to share it's that? It's going in our rotation, and it kind of inspired me to, like, you know, just find some new recipes and try them. I mean, just because we need to spice things this up. This is the time to do it, right? This is the time to do it. <laughs> if you get the energy. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. So. Great. Yeah. How about you? What are you loving this week? Okay. I am loving a show. It's on Hulu. It's called Mrs. America. Oh, yeah. Oh, have you seen it? Have you watched it? No, but I've heard of it. Remind me what it, okay. remind me what so it is. Okay. So the main character is Kate Blanchett. And she okay. is, it's a, it's kind of a historical fiction about the 1970s in America where um, the Equal Rights Amendment was getting pushed. Okay. And in Congress, and and um, Kate Blanchett plays Phyllis Schlafly, who is a conservative um, activist, and so okay. and she is fighting against the ERA. Oh yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, I remember this. So yeah. it is so good. Kate Blanchett is just great. I I love her. And then my favorite is. Um, Rose Byrne, who I, I don't even know who this is. I, I yeah. think she's kind of a big deal. I should probably know. But she <laughs> plays Gloria Steinem. Oh, okay. And I just love her character. <laughs> I love I just love how she plays Gloria Steinem. Um, and then there's also other great actresses like Elizabeth Banks is in it. Tracy Ullman, mm. which you might think, be like, I'm not a fan. And, but you, you'd love her in her role that she plays here and yeah it's just such a great it's it's such a great show it's so, so well it's made a, so well directed loving the music and it's a drama it's a drama i'd say yes mm-hmm. yep. yep okay they're about 45 minutes each oh yeah and there i think there's only right now there's uh five episodes oh and i think there's one um episode a week now from now on okay okay um it is getting good it's getting really good. You know, I think I'm going to propose this to Jeremy for, I'm looking for a show for yeah. he and I to watch together. Yes. And I'm going to propose this one. Yeah. I think, I think it would be good. I think Sean would like this a lot. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I for love sure. it. Thank you for I recommending lo- Yeah, that. definitely. I love it because it's really like so much of this actually really happened. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's a little bit yeah. of a history lesson. Yeah. Right. So. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, if you are interested in finding us on social media, we are on Facebook and Instagram at Homeschool Unrefined. And our website is homeschoolunrefined.com, where you can find links to everything that we talked about. And we will see you next week. Thanks for listening. Homeschool Unrefined is created and produced by Marin Gorse and Angela Sizer. Ethan Miller is our editor, and Amanda Ginn is our VP of all the important things. <laughs>